Today, the Billings community and mayor joining together to celebrate Martin Luther King Jr. Day, remembering the civil rights icon who fought for equality for all will take you to the celebration. Plus, the Bureau of Indian Affairs debuts a new tool to bring attention to missing and murdered cases. We'll have the details and hear why it will help. Then later, a landmark day for Montana high school sports as major changes are approved for baseball and basketball. We'll break it all down in just a bit. Well, good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us on this Monday. I'm Russ Riesinger. Our top story tonight, the community still reeling after an early morning shooting yesterday in the Billings Heights that left a teenager dead and a suspect still on the loose. Our Casey Conlin has been putting the pieces together on what we know. The biggest news today, we officially know the victim's identity. 15-year-old Cohen Parker, a sophomore at Billings Senior High School, was shot early Sunday morning in this parking lot on the southern edge of Castle Rock Park. He was then taken to an area hospital. We don't know by whom or in what car, but it was there that he was pronounced dead shortly after. Neighbors we've talked to say the parking lot had become a popular late night gathering spot. Billings police officers responded to calls about the shooting around 2 a.m. Sunday. They did not find any suspects, but did find multiple shell casings in the area. We counted at least nine from our video Sunday. BPD detectives have not announced any details on the active investigation, not about a specific suspect or if they are looking for multiple persons. Parker's family spent much of Monday making arrangements with a local funeral home. We asked to speak with them to get an idea about what Cohen was like, and they nominated one of his best friends, Colin Mauser. We loved basketball, loved being outdoors. He was just really outgoing and funny and kind. Cared about a lot of people, yeah. cared for people, made sure people were okay before him. He says Parker had some friends in the Heights, but didn't normally hang out on that side of town. Nevertheless, he says the news of Parker's death came as a complete shock. I was like, no, that couldn't have happened to Cohen. Cohen's the sweetest kid you can meet. Yeah, I didn't know. I, couldn't, I just couldn't believe it. Again, Billings Police have not released any details of the ongoing investigation. School District 2 will have a crisis team available at Senior High starting tomorrow for any students that may need help with Parker's death. Near Castle Rock Park, I'm Casey Conlon for MTN News. Deanna Limbrahan is one of many indigenous women of Montana who have either gone missing or have been murdered. Her body was found in the Stillwater River last summer. Deanna's family is still looking for answers, and they're hoping that a new website from the Bureau of Indian Affairs might help solve her case. When I hear her favorite song, it's like it's just now hitting me. It's been six months since Darlene lost her daughter, Deanna. Deanna's body was found in the Stillwater River near Absorki, though the cause of Deanna's death was drowning. Her family believes she was murdered. We also heard that she was tied, that they hog-tied her. And then they, she was being with a bat. Deanna was an outgoing mother of three who relished the time she spent with her family. She liked to visit. She liked to spend time with her friends. She liked to do things that were outgoing. Described by her aunt as a kind-hearted woman with lots of love, the story of Deanna's death is unfortunately one that many Native Americans are all too familiar with. A significant portion of missing and murdered cases in Montana are those of indigenous people, mostly women. It's an epidemic. Um, and it's been going on for decades. The Bureau of Indian Affairs has launched a new website to raise awareness about this epidemic. The website works as a hotline where people can submit tips on cases of missing and murdered indigenous people. Part of the problem is, is that we don't always have the best data on this, the full size and scope of this problem. Brian Newland hopes that this website will connect the public with the BIA and other law enforcement agencies like the FBI and the Department of Justice. By linking this up, this will allow us to share information more easily and help us solve these cases um, and bring closure to families who need it. Deanna's family says that this is a step in the right direction, but they're still frustrated with the response from law enforcement. Law enforcement responding to it is very weak. But I do believe that she's been pushed to the side. The family believes much more needs to be done. I hope they find out what who, who these people were that did this to her. And I believe there has to be justice served for her. In Lame Deer, Alina Howder, MTN News.
Chief Meteorologist Ed McIntosh joining us now, and today's nice weather could unfortunately mean more problems tomorrow. That's right. We got the wind and the warm for today. In fact, still a uh, wind advisory in the usual Livingston Nye fishtail area. Some of those gusts to 60, 65 miles an hour by this evening could continue to hold the temperatures up, but overnight we'll start to watch a cold front move through. During the day tomorrow, we switch from rain to snow showers, so that could mean some slick roadways initially and then areas of poor visibility with some areas of blowing snow. So as we get through the day tomorrow, the Temperatures will drop, and with that, we'll start to see some of those freezing road conditions. And it's very chilly by the time we get into Wednesday. We'll take a closer look at all the forecast details coming up in just a little while. The country is coming together to honor the life and legacy of civil rights leader Martin Luther King Jr. here at Peaks to Plains Park at Montana State University in Billings with an annual bell ringing ceremony. <laughs> And I think uh, remembering Martin Luther King and what he fought for um, is a helpful reminder that it is possible to bring things together. Martin Luther King Jr.'s legacy lives on 54 years after his death. The ringing of the bells at MSU Billings. <laughs> symbolizes King's quest for peace, justice, and human rights. The of tolerance, peace, and equality by meeting community needs and by making this holiday a day on, not a day off. But we are a nation that is still very much divided. For the past 20 or so years, this ceremony has been held at MSU Billings to unite Montanans. That message of unity at a time when it's so badly needed. And we're obviously, we've seen those divisions politically, but it's also in terms of racial justice, um, in terms of income and poverty. There's just a hundred different things that are trying to pull us apart as a country. So on the day that we celebrate Martin Luther King Jr., I leave you with his quote that holds as true today as it did 64 years ago. The ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. In Billings, Matthew Hidalgo, MTN News. It's been another deadly 24 hours on the COVID-19 front as two more Yellowstone County residents died yesterday. Yellowstone County has now lost 488 total residents since the pandemic began. On top of that, 64 patients remain in the two Billings hospitals tonight with 12 in intensive care and nine on ventilators. 44 of those 64 patients are not vaccinated. Last week alone, the county saw nearly 1,700 positive cases. Just a reminder, Riverstone Health will provide a limited number of COVID-19 home test kits free of charge starting tomorrow, but supply is again limited. This is the second round of free at-home test kits being offered by Riverstone Health. Tests will be given out starting tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock at Metro Park on a first come first serve basis. But officials caution that when all available kits have been distributed, they are gone. Test kits are limited to one kit per person per household. You can head to our website for more details. Starting Wednesday, free at home test kits can be ordered online by going to www.covidtest.gov. Once ordered, the test will be shipped at no charge within 7 to 12 days. That program allows four free tests per residential address. Well, it's a big day for high school sports here in Montana as MHSA move forward with two major changes this afternoon. MTN's Luke Shelton covered the meeting and has details. Hello from the Copper King Convention Center as the Montana High School Association is in Butte for its annual meeting. There's a lot on the agenda, but of particular interest are a pair of proposals that will be voted on today. One centers on sanctioning high school baseball, the other on implementing shot clocks in basketball. Let's see how the members vote. The decision on whether or not to implement high school shot clocks came down to a simple majority vote. The answer, a resounding yes. Oh, I think it was a long time coming. We've been pushing it for a long time. There's been a lot of coaches pushing for it. It's, uh, it was a unanimous vote in AA that they wanted a shot clock. Montana high schools are now in line to adopt shot clocks. The proposal calls for them to be in use across the state by next season. While most in attendance at Monday's meetings were thrilled with the vote, there was some anxiety, mainly over the cost. Well, I think it was a matter of time. The concern for most schools, I think, is the expense. And the sooner we get involved in it and get it going, the easier it will be a better transition. The cost of purchasing and installing shot clocks is estimated to be between $5,000 
$10 and $10,000 per school. That's a lot of money, especially for the smaller schools. But the general consensus was that it would be a worthwhile investment. Definitely changed the game, but you know, you also got to consider the financial aspects. It's a significant contribution of our community that we got to make and put those shot clocks in. But you know, like everything, uh, we always learn to adapt and adjust, and uh, it's always for the better of all the all the activities that we provide. The MHSA also voted to sanction high school baseball, something that it hasn't done since the 1970s. Some schools are eager to embrace the sport, while some are worried about participation numbers and stretching budgets even thinner. It'll be interesting to see. Springtime's not real conducive to it, but it'll be exciting. I think a lot of kids will be excited about the chance to play baseball in spring. And it's another monetary impact on our school district when we're short of staff. It's hard to justify adding something else that costs a lot of money when we're short on staff, but, but uh, we'll see. It'll be interesting. In Butte, Luke Shelton, MTN Sports. Well, still to come on the MTN 530 News here on Q2, prices for real estate in the Billings area hit record highs in 2021. Will that trend continue this year? What you need to know if you're buying or selling. And a little later in sports, Game Changers. We'll take a look back at some of the top local plays of the week. The MTN 530 News continues right after this. From Montana's news leader, you're watching the MTN 530 News. Billings area real estate continues to be red hot, surpassing $1 billion in total sales for the first time last year. 92% of homes that were listed sold. That's a record, and many sold in a matter of hours of coming onto the market. I sat down with the president of the Billings Association of Realtors to see what's expected in 2022. Homes with for sale signs are few and far between in Billings and often gone in the blink of an eye. For a home that, that has any uh, uh, quality or location to it, people will jump on and there will be multiple offers. Dennis Cook is the incoming president of the Billings Association of Realtors. He tells me inventories are low and demand continues to be high for homes, with many people wanting to move to Billings and other parts of Montana. They just want to get away from the big city life. They, they want a better environment to raise their family in and Billings certainly provides that. And that is one of the reasons that home prices are skyrocketing. Take a look. The average sales price for a home in Billings in 2005 was $162,000. It jumped to $200,000 in 2010 to $238,000 in 2015, and in the last three years went from $273,000 to $292,000, then catapulted all the way to $351,000 in 2021. 20% is is pretty much where we're at right now as far as a jump in prices, some as high as 25%, you know, and it's, uh, it's kind of mind boggling, especially if you've been in the business a long time. It is certainly good news for anyone who needs to or is willing to sell. However, that's the biggest thing that we as agents and brokers run across is that you can, they want to sell. There's no question about that. It's just that they ask the next question is, where am I going to go? Cook says that could change if the market softens, but with interest rates still low, demand high, and construction of new homes running behind, look for 2022 to remain a seller's market in Billings. It's going to change. It's going to peak, but it's going to be a gradual process. Coming up next, you wouldn't know it today, but the weather is quickly swinging back to winter mode. Ed will walk us through the changes coming up next. Hey everybody, Scott Breen here, eager to get your latest work week started with our latest edition of Q2's Game Changer, straight ahead in sports. The MTN 530 News continues right after this.